So who am I? So for those that haven't met me before, haven't been on my training, it's all right with the people that have. I know there's a couple of places in here people that know this stuff, but I'm just going to tell you, I guess what qualifies me to stand here and talk to you is two things. Um, I run my own mental event portfolio. Well, I can tell you about me anyway, so that's easy. Um, I run my own rent-to-rent portfolio here in Little Keynes. Uh, I also, in November, that's, that I started that in November of 2015. In January of 2016, a very wise man, Justin Whittemore, said to me, you know those deals that you're not keeping yourself? Do you know that people will pay you for those deals? At this point, a massive light bulb went off for me because it meant I could make money doing what I was already doing with properties that I didn't want to keep, <coughs> which was an amazing revelation for me because I couldn't physically keep everything myself. I didn't have the funds, the cash flow, etc. because I was just at the beginning of my business. But being able to monetize the deals that I didn't want was brilliant. The first deal I ever packaged up and sold, I got £5,000 for, and it took me 10 and a half hours of physical time to earn that £5,000. So for me, that was rockstar money. Okay, mm -hmm. for many people in this room, that would still be rockstar money. So that's what I've done really for the last year whilst building my own rent rent portfolio here. Everything I don't want to keep, I sell. I'm now obviously training. Um, last year, I made just under thousand, £100,000 from sourcing rent to rent deals. So this weekend, we're going to show you everything I do so that you can go away and check the stuff out. I did that part time, so most of you will probably have seen on Facebook because I'm a little bit obsessed with Facebook, as <laughs> most of you know. Um, there's no secret there. Uh, I spent three months of last year traveling the world, went all the way around the world, um, did deal packaging whilst I was doing that, flipped two deals, got paid. My whole trip was paid for while I was away because I got £10,000 paid into my bank while I was traveling. I then came back and went full time. So I'm now in property. I train four times a year. I'm not a trainer by trade. It's not what I do. Um, really, I'm here to just share the knowledge and techniques and tactics that I use. Um, my income, the way that I pay my mortgage is from my property business. So <laughs> By the way, guys, I, I forgot to say when I stood up, it's being recorded, so it has to happen today, isn't it? Yeah, we love a technical glitch. Yeah, that's all good. Okay, so um, before I got into property, I was sales and marketing, recruitment. I came out of university. I did a design management degree. <coughs> Like most graduates, I think, and I then accidentally fell into sales. I did a territory management role, and that was new business development, cold leads, converting into profitable accounts. That was my whole job. I then moved into more consultancy led work. Then I moved into recruitment again, hardcore cold calling, sales, business development, um, and then I went into sales consultancy. So I was a freelance consultant for sales and marketing for other businesses. So I've done sales and marketing for, I'd say about 19, which I'm 33 now, so I can do the maths myself. Um, and it's sourcing and packaging, but it's just sales and marketing. So although I haven't been in property for huge amounts of time, the skills that we're going to teach you this weekend is just sales and marketing. And that I've done for years. And I love it. It's what I absolutely thrive on. You'll see as I get really nerdy and into it this weekend that that is what excites me. I just happen to do it in the property industry very well. So, just a bit of an agenda for today. You've actually got this in your workbook. The workbooks for everybody, they are that. They are not books of slides for you to take away and read at a later date. These are workbooks for you to work in this weekend so that you go away with your notes, the content, the bits that are important to you, so that you can go away and put this stuff into practice. If you don't write notes in this book, you're not going to remember what to do when you step out of here this weekend. So please
please use workbooks. I put lots of time and effort into making them relevant. Please use them. Please don't phone me on Monday and say, can I have a copy of the slides? Because the answer will be no. The workbook's there for a reason, so please, please use it. Okay, so the first job I'm going to get you guys to do is to go into your own heads for a minute and just take a few minutes to think about these questions and write the answers in the right bit in your workbook. Why <coughs> are you here? What's brought you here today? How much money do you need every month to pay all of your absolute minimum everything? So your bills, your mortgages, your car lease, all of that sort of stuff. What's that figure to you? When are you actually starting this? Is this something you're going to go away and do next week? Or is this something you're planning for six months' time, a year's time? How much time do you have to allocate to doing sourcing and packaging? Where you're going to do it, if you've thought about a location or if you're going to go national or just very local to yourself. And then what burning question you've got to answer, I need to answer for you this weekend. And we're just going to run through some of these. Um, because what this does, if you tell me this information, I can tailor this weekend to make sure it's right for you guys. So just take a few minutes and put that in your book. <coughs> yeah, if you want to take photos of the slides, on if there's anything you want to kind of take away, then feel free. Just please make sure it's a good angle of view. It's never going anywhere else when you're. Let me sell a tape. Balance. 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 Introduce Eden because he's a very young little man. He's about to enter one. He's at, Eden's actually my apprentice. Um, you oh, you're 13, aren't you? Yeah. And uh, he's my best friend's son. And he called me last year and said, I really want to get into property. Can I just come and like, do some work with you and spend time with you and learn stuff? So he has the. It's invited to the stuff that I do. So if you don't know anything, I can't wait. 
Right then, guys, so why are we doing this? Who wants to shout out some? Why are we here? Generate income. Why else? Freedom. Freedom, choice, okay? Financial independence. Second? To retire early. Nice. When I beach somewhere or in the rain here? Anyone else? Say again? To pay for my holidays. To pay for your holidays. Say again? Job replacement. All of these reasons are, if you think about them, everything we've said is all to do with choice and freedom and flexibility of life, being able to, if, it's, if you're in a job at the moment, being able to move out of that, if it's obviously a job that you maybe don't enjoy or you don't feel like you get paid enough for or whatever it might be, but ultimately all of those reasons come back to choice. Now, 18 months ago, I would certainly not have ever been able to say to anybody that I felt like I had choice and freedom in my life. I was working really hard, I was self-employed. I was probably the hardest boss I've ever had because I never gave myself a lunch break. I was always at my desk at 7 a.m. I always finished work probably about 9 p.m. I never ever really took a break. But I was still 60 grand in debt. I didn't have choice, I didn't have freedom. I thought I did because I was self-employed. But it was bollocks, it wasn't true at all. Because I wasn't actually running a business that was generating sustainable revenue consistently. And I also wasn't probably a very good business person, actually. I, hadn't, I didn't have a mentor, I didn't have a coach, I didn't have anybody to help me to learn. I sold my first business in January, and that business taught me every single possible way not to run a business. Is that your full of a business? Yeah, my full of a business. I sold it in January, and it literally taught me every possible way not to run a business. Now, my new business is completely different. Now I have choice. Now I have freedom, now I have flexibility. Now I've replaced my job on holiday. Now I don't have to work long hours. I can take the day off like I did yesterday because I can. And that's what this is going to give to you guys. Whatever your reason is, this system will be able to do that for you. How much do we need every month? Shout out some figures for me. Five grand. Ten. Two and a half. <coughs> Two and a half, five, so one, ten. Five, five, five. One thousand five hundred. So everybody's figure is different. Mine's 3,000, that's what I need every month to pay for everything. And then I can come and bring everything else in kind of bones together. The person that said 10 mm -hmm. was you. Do you need 10 or do you want 10? I need more than five, just because of some of the stuff that we're up to. Okay. Yeah, so five so is kind of crazy, but the six that come by down to the 10. Like what's this, what would you say the specific number is? I'd say six. Six, yeah. okay. Any, anybody need more than six? What's your need number? <coughs> um, probably about eight. Eight. Okay. So every single person in this room needs less than ten grand a month. Do we all agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I'm going to show you today then is we're going to work on figures of ten grand. I'll show you how we can do this. For those of you that need less than that, when we're talking about deals per month, if you only, if you only need £1,500 a month to pay all your bills, you don't need to do as many deals every month. For me to earn £10,000 a month every single month, I have to do roughly two deals a month. But that's the, because that's the figure in the room, and I like round maths, actually eight is the figure, That's what we're going to work to, a system that can give us... I say, Sarah, just a quickie, I, mean, I know it's a gross figure, but one of the things that would be interesting this weekend is that if you did 10 grand a month, you make it down to about seven, and then you've got a net off all your marketing costs, and it'll be an interesting thing to see that, that headline figure of two deals a month of 10 grand, what the likely, forget the tax, but in terms of marketing, what the likely spend is to, to, to if you like, the ratio in there somewhere to get back to those two yeah. deals, how much you've had to spend to get there. So, um, just to put that into perspective, other than my time and my phone bill, which I don't factor into the, these figures because obviously that I wasn't paying myself a salary last year because I was building it. Um, I actually only spent three hundred pounds on marketing last year, and I, I made, year, really? Gosh, yeah. 
it doesn't include things like fuel to go and meet people and stuff like that. It doesn't include my time or my phone bill <coughs> um, or like my internet and stuff like that. But I physically pay three hundred pounds for marketing things, and I earn about ninety seven grand a year. <coughs> because of what we're going to show you this weekend, you'll see I don't plow money into things that I don't need to. I didn't have any money when I started this business. I had to find a way to make money with nothing because all I had was 60 grand's worth of debt, red bill, credit cards, and things like that. I didn't have the money to go and buy 100,000 flies. I just didn't have it. So I couldn't spend it. So what I don't, what I'll talk you through each of the different things I'll show you this weekend, what they cost me. But actually, the, you don't have to spend, to get the quickest possible route to this, In terms of time we're allocating, are we are we full time part timers? What are we working around jobs? So can I hand if we are part time around a job? Most of us, okay. You're part time around school. <laughs> who who is doing this full time? And are we thinking? If we want to go national with this, or are we thinking local to our where we are? We've got areas in mind. We've got areas in mind, and are they local <coughs> to you? Yeah. Who's lo who wants to try and go local to where they live? <coughs> That's one of my questions for this weekend. What's the pros and cons? Right. Okay. Yeah. One of the things that's brilliant for me this weekend is to find out how you replicate the model local <coughs> and do a lot of stuff face to face. Yeah. How you can replicate that and go national and still. Similar thing, but maybe different logistics, but okay. strategies and you know, see how you do that. So there's a very, very distinct difference between sourcing to keep and sourcing to flip. The key difference is the business I run where I'm booing on my own rent to rinse, I go to every single one of those myself. I see it with my own eyes because it's my business that is affected by its success or its failure. When you're packaging deals, it's not your job to go and see a house. It's not your job to meet with the, the, those people. It's the investor's responsibility to go and see their investment. So what I will teach you this weekend is remote. Everything is remote. We're not going to talk about face-to-face -face meetings with anybody because I don't do it. And you don't need to do it. <laughs> I mean, uh, normally if you want to, I don't know, this is my house, but normally if you want to see whether a rent rate stack up. Yeah. That, that it is when you don't have any snow plants and everything all over you want to line us. So you know it's to analyze that and so make more sense for that. Yeah and we talk about the scripts of how we do that in our discovery call section. We talk about how you can get the information that you need out of the person on the phone, whether it's an agent or a landlord, right. so that you can then put together the analysis correctly to then package it up. And we're going to talk about how we do that already. So in terms of how you replicate the model that you use face to face on a national basis, we'll absolutely cover that this weekend, for sure. Burning questions. So, what I like to try and do is make sure we tick off everybody's burning question over the weekend. So I'm going to write them down, put them on the wall, and as we cover them, it just get, helps me to kind of road map for the weekend for everybody, okay? So, if we just start with Val. Yep. Um my question is, what sort of uh, contract or, or maybe sort of road down you can source and compete with that? Yeah, contracts. Kevin? Um, in negotiation, how to know when a deal is better as a BMV, lease option, or rent to rent? I like that question because you'll notice over this weekend, I'd actually go into any deal with blinkers on and say, right, I want this as a rent to rent, or I want this as a lease option. I will go into every deal and I'll present my priority strategy. If that doesn't work for them, I'll say, well, why don't we try this? What about this? What about this? For example. So we, we will cover that over this weekend. We are. Uh, how to generate leads direct from landlords? Definitely cover that a lot. That's my, my main strategy. So analyzing the numbers, yeah. There's 
three calculators you get as part of this course anyway, which you'll get um, afterwards. <coughs> I'll show you them tomorrow, actually, we do analysis for numbers, which is the rent to then um, purchasing and service accommodation. So you get that as part of the course. So that will help. We'll go through it, and then you'll be able to take that away anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's how that's done. My company structure, yeah. in terms of Okay. you have to be regulated. Mm. We're not. Our job as a packager is to research, collect the facts, present the facts. We're being paid as a consultant to do the legwork that they can't or don't want to or don't know how to do. We say, here are the facts. <coughs> it is the investor's responsibility to go away and do their own due diligence on that opportunity and decide yes or no, I want it or I don't. The word advice, we don't give advice. Okay, we are we are just a consultant, collecting facts and presenting facts. Okay, uh, Valerie. Uh, question: How to systemize the business to keep it overall? Yep. And also to be able to know and know what's facts. So anal analyzing the numbers. Yeah. Yep. Systemization. Yep. Uh, Keith. Yeah, you touched on it, but mine is um, in and around compliance, okay. specifically finance and some PS dirty, which I don't really know anything about. Okay, so our special guest today is actually all about compliance. Wow. So there's this whole section on. And who's our special guest? Tina Walsh is our special guest. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to give her a bigger welcome with that, but. Uh, sorry, <laughs> um, <I spoke. laughs> that's all right. So compliance, you'll absolutely get that box ticked this weekend for sure. Elizabeth. Um, it's covered to you, but I don't know what's going to come in here. Um, 
one is about instructions because I find it quite complicated to explain to someone who doesn't have no idea how to do it. I just well. Design a special facility buyers. Yep. Um, so, and I don't feel many people do it in the south of England because yep. of XYZ. So that's another problem because yeah. that's fine. Okay, so, so explaining to a <coughs> non property person the yeah. creative property strategy. We will talk about that. Yeah. Um, I'm actually having an infographic made at the moment, okay. which I'm going to use to send to vendors for lease options yeah. because I also really struggle oh. to just get them to understand it because I'm in the our world. Yeah. You have to remember that they're not, and I was trying to explain. My hairdresser was asking me about it this weekend, like um, on, on Thursday. And the best way I can explain it is: Have you ever bought a car on finance? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like buying a house just like that. Yeah. And they're like, "What? I don't get it." And then can't possibly be legal. It, it's about how you can get that off. Yeah. I totally understand that pain. I have it all the time. Yeah. Does anyone else struggle with that? Or has anyone even ever tried to find an instruction? I think the best way to ever to use the words lease option. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Lynn? Um, it's just more on how to get um, agents to extend contracts. Okay. So because they just want to push you into six or twelve months usually, yeah. yeah. Or landlords, same. Landlords is easy, agents is harder, but it can be done. So I've got three year agreements with agents and with people from my own lease and properties. Um I've never got a five year with an agent straight off the bat, but we've got three year with beautiful me, which is just Uh, yeah, I'd be interested to hear how you uh, uh, sort of move from talking to agent or, or direct to vendor um, to do it yourself, which you know, I can kind of do. Yeah. Just interested in how you translate that into something where it's going to be packaged up for somebody else, yeah. where you're one step removed from the deal, yeah. and where you know you don't necessarily you know, use the same. It's a, um, it's actually one of my favourite bits because it's literally just one line. It's just one line that changes and. Completely repositions you, but allows you to package through agents, which is what I think most people fear. Most people genuinely say to me, "You just can't package deals through agents. Yeah. Keep them in yourself. That's okay because you build a relationship, etc., etc. You just can't package. You just can." Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show how. <coughs> no problem. Uh, scripts. I'm going to shut that down now. Oh, names, I'm getting stuck now. Say again? Jen. Jen. Jen, burning question. Um, I'd love to know what you're doing with agents and what you do with the deal. Okay, so contracts for like, sourcing yeah. agreements, have contracts with your um, investors and those sorts of things, yeah? Yeah? Great. The clients will also touch on legals and responsibilities, what we're responsible for, what we're not, due diligence, what we need to do, what needs to be compiled, etc., etc. So that actually, I think, once we go through... When I handle contracts and team handles the clients, I think that will clear that gap for you. Um, Louise? I, my question is, um, I'm more of an amendment to pay members person. You are indeed. Yes. I know this about you. <laughs> so it's just converting back into a sales person, into me into a sales person. Uh, this, I think it's a straight negotiation because <coughs> yep. I need to know what I'm looking why I'm negotiating. Yep. I'm talking about that. So yeah. negotiations and objection handling is probably the, it's it, a sale is won or lost in the objection. It's how you handle the things when they say no. That's the bit that I get really excited about in sales because I just like to get them to say And that's yes what thing. I don't get. Yeah, and mo people, if you're not a natural yeah. challenger, if you're not naturally built to, do, to challenge their no, yeah. that can be quite a hard thing. Yeah. So the scripts and the numbers, we get the numbers to do the talking. Yeah. You know, we always make sure that they are, Better off in the financial terms. Mm -hmm. That way, they it, the fun, actually the numbers get them to say yes. Yeah. So yeah, we will. That kind of comes down to scripts, objections, and uh, negotiation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Richard, it, um, <coughs> who you're packaging the deals to? So and I, I, for me, it's a bit of getting something and then going, for example, a purchase. Actually, you haven't got a person that you necessarily. Pass it on to at that moment in time. Yeah. So they just be able to deal quickly. Okay, so 
this is kind of the chicken or the egg situation as to whether to have a deal first or investor first, right? We do touch on that tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to just put this down to chicken and egg. And what we do when when you don't have the investor lined up and you happen to have a deal for them, what are we doing in that situation? Jack? Um, I'd like to know a bit more about what you found hardest on your own journey and what you've overcome. And what I find hard every day. I yeah, what, how yeah. you overcome it and what Justin's taught you as well from a mental yeah. point of view. By no means is my life an easy, easy place to be. You know, I have deals drop out and it kills me. It really kills me because I, I've already spent the money on the place. I'm like, oh, that'll pay for my next trip to China or whatever it is that I'm planning. <coughs> every single day, I'm not a very disciplined person either, so every day I have to have, like, worked. I don't float about in fast cars yet. I don't have holiday homes yet. I'm a very normal, 12 months ahead of where you are now. So I still have the growing pains of my business every day. So we definitely touch on the things that I find most difficult, um, the things that frustrate me, and you'll probably hear a couple of <coughs> comments of things that I talk about when I talk about myself, things that I find difficult. I'd like to know where you're going as well. That'd be interesting, okay. like long term. Yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah. That would be great. I could just do that all day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's everybody I've covered, isn't it? Uh, just add motivation onto that. How do you keep yourself motivated? Yeah, one more, Sarah. Um, I don't know if you have time today to see my testing or something like inside you. We go through that tomorrow, I think. Come on, it's late this afternoon, it's tomorrow morning. Right, okay, so these are our burning questions for the weekend. Yeah. Um, excellent. Can I ask one question? So, what time do you walk your dog? Can you just point us or direct us on how to sort out things so that you So you like VA, VA yeah, type, yeah. Like how, again that comes probably alone. time management, um, knowing when to outsource stuff, yeah, that's fine. We do cover that, but yeah. Right then. Yes? HMOs are legal everywhere, it's how you fund them. So if your HMO is not set up compliantly, i.e. it does, doesn't follow the rules of accounts and gives you, that's what makes an HMO illegal. And we will talk about that. Okay, so this goes straight to motivation. <coughs> so I've already briefly touched on it. This business is hard when you're getting started. Those of you that I know in the room that are already sourcing and are already calling agents, are already getting laughed at for putting in stupidly low offers, you know, I know the people in this room already struggle sometimes on the day when you think, you know what, everybody just keeps saying no to me. How many people in the room feel like they just get said no to all the time, they're actually doing this business? Yeah, and what are they saying no to usually? Oh, they say subletting is illegal. Yes, yes. Subletting is illegal. Yeah, yeah. I love that one. They don't understand it. They don't understand yeah, it. Yeah, that's one that I found. We don't want to change their contract for you. Agents, <laughs> can't change. <laughs> yeah, we love that. Yeah. It's perfect. Oh, the property's gone. The property's gone. Yeah, well, that's a difficult one because it's like yeah, someone that would be paying uh, some really good transactions knowing the way. Yeah. Like the deal progression is one of the most frustrating things for us because actually, this this happened to me this week. Went to see a seven bed in <coughs> the I fell in love with. Already had all the HMO stuff done. Already got a license till two thousand and nineteen. Perfect, beautiful, four en suites, massive rooms. I'll take it. Send me the contract. The next day, I'm like, oh, someone's just come in and put the deposit down. What? Like, what are you doing? Frustrating. Having the right mindset in this particular business is so important. It really is. Because you're going to be told no more than you're told yes. <laughs> How many of you re have read Go For No? I love it. I yeah? It. yeah? Did it give you, for those of you that haven't read it, it's a book called Go For No. It only it takes about an hour and a half to listen to on Audible. It's a really short book. 
it will completely change your focus in terms of being told no. And it will completely change your focus in terms of being able to handle the barriers that keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. As a salesperson for 19 years, I'm used to being told no. That's something I've done for my whole career. Comfortable with it, it doesn't bother me. Having when I read vocal no last this year, earlier this year, even me, I was like, whoa, this is life-changing, this book. It's completely changed my perspective on it. And I'm going to be introducing that in my business when I recruit. Mm. There will be an award for being told no the most told number of times. You will get a, an award every year for being told no. Because if you're told no the most number of times in any business, you put out the most offers, you're also going to have been told yes the most number of times. Like a ticking mark. <laughs> you will. It, that's what happens. If, you, if you're just being told no, you're doing the right things, you're doing the work, you're putting the offers out, eventually people say yes. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. There's a ratio in there. Yeah, there's always a ratio. We talk about ratios, actually, when we're doing um, analysis and offers. I also find it really, really important to become emotionally connected to my goals. Now, those of you that have met me before know that I love traveling. I went traveling last year. I have new goals now because I, I have my I make, I make, I believe in goal. I set that with my husband. It's been a year, year and a year before we got married. So we got married in September 2015. So maybe a year before we joked and said, <coughs> Wouldn't it be great if we could like go around the world on our honeymoon? Never thought it would ever happen. We just wrote it down, put it on the board, just sat there. In September 2015, when we got married, we still had absolutely no idea how we were going to go there. We actually went away for a week in Colchester. That was my honeymoon, my official honeymoon. I started this business in November because in that week away in Colchester, we realised something had to change. And I'd, I'd been on property courses, I'd been into property, I'd come to rooms like this, I'd <coughs> learned loads of stuff, I'd home on a Monday morning, so I'd get in the room, Tuesday happened, Wednesday happened, Thursday happened, month happened, nothing happened. People would give me the information that I need, but if I don't do anything with that information, and I don't go away and actually take any sort of action, can't be expected to then see the result. Last year we set this I've made it goal, and I call it my I've made it goal. By no means do I think I've made it yet. I'm still working. When I've retired early, that's when I'll know I've made it. <laughs> <coughs> I think it's really important for you to get connected emotionally to your goals. So who in here have has goals? Has I've made it goals? Most of you. Anyone want to share? I want to have less on. Wow, very specific, very important to you, knowing well what you're into. Important, important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's my, I love that. That's my ultimate. Because I know as it stands now, I wouldn't be able to. And what that means to you is you've got a reward in place for all this hard work you're going to do. You've got a very specific reward, which is so important. Who else has got I've made it goals? Sure. So my wife turns 50 next January. Okay. And for me, it's about being able to have right celebration for her some uh, big diamonds and jewels and, uh, and she, she, she's from chile south america so oh. i want to fly i want to fly across a number of people to come oh, attend gosh. it so Amazing. so i'm there going shit getting closer 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 <laughs> 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 and I'm sitting, here, I'm sitting here getting the information and not doing anything with it no surprise so so that's why take action take action rich and your your emotional connection will be yeah. you know just think how you're going to feel yeah. when you handle those tickets the smile, that's yeah. that's your emotional connection. It's, it's an amazing goal. Anyone else? Can I come? Can I come? Yeah, I can come. Yeah, I can come. Anyone else? Kevin? Beginning where I want to go this year, um, I'll be in Brazil for my birthday. Brazil for your birthday, be getting where you, where you get in terms of targets for this year. Great. Anyone else? About to let my time I'm going to do it. Your own that you bought? Uh, I don't know yet, but yeah, just do it by myself. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Buy a house for your parents. Buy a house for your parents. Okay. 
So my old made it gold, as I, sit, as I stand in front of you today, I've got three. One is to borrow my mama house, which is another way of helping her. Two is to fly my nan to China, see the place I've got to And the third one is to help reduce homelessness in the UK. And I have a separate project aside from what I do, and you'll probably see it on Facebook that's working in partnership with the voluntary sector to be able to do what we do, source property, because that's what I do, but we just give it to a different group of people. Bear in mind three, I've made it go. Reduce homelessness, emotionally connected with that massively. Fly my nan to China because she keeps saying to me, I'll never get to go. It makes me emotional just talking about it. Imagine imagine being able to fly to China. I buy my mum a house. She needs to have if you don't have own old home as well. You don't need to necessarily come up with it right now, but it also needs to evolve because you'll hit your I've made it goal. You will. It probably feels million miles away. I know Lisa, when you talk about that right now, today, you think, fucking hell, I've literally got no idea how that's going to become a reality. But if you know what you're striving for, it gives you a roadmap to get to. If you've got no idea what you're trying to get, you literally just go around like this with no real structure or anything. And in this particular business, it's so easy to get <coughs> distracted because you start to become really good at one thing. Other things will come to you. Other types of deals, other relationships, other ways you can make money, other investors, other things. You have to stay focused. I'm not saying you have to focus on one thing because I don't do that myself. <coughs> most, pe most people, especially my business mentor, not just him, I have another business mentor, he said, just focus on one thing in your business. Oh, I can't do that at all. But you do have to know where you're headed and make sure everything you're doing is heading you in that right direction. Otherwise, you're never going to get there. You're just going to go that way. So, what is deal packaging? Who here has, has not actually got any idea what deal packaging is? <coughs> So, somebody summarise, tell me, what is deal packaging? Jack? Is it when you basically find out whether a property or not, or you find a property first, then you make sure it all adds up and suitable for an investor to make a return on their money? Yep. So, you're basically saving the investor time and time yep. and effort. So, doing the searches and saying, and for the investor so they don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. Any other definitions? Sources. I say just facilitator, actually probably the most important call. I shouldn't use the word just. You are a facilitator. Your job is to introduce Introduce this these this group of people here to this group of people here. And you get paid a fee in the middle. You are a consultant. You are somebody who is researching securing, researching, analysing, securing, and introducing. That's your goal. Your role is not to make the decisions. Your role is not to advise. You are there to collect data, <coughs> present data. Your job is to introduce this group of people here to this group of people. The way that we do that, there are lots of methods, we're going to go away over this weekend and talk about, Hard bit is finding this group of people. Do you want to agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. Because I'll let you into a little secret. If you can find these people and do a good enough job, these people appear from nowhere mm -hmm. as if by magic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people that you never in a million years thought had any money will suddenly go, Oh, do you want to earn £150,000? Like, what? Where's that come from? I actually had a meeting, well, not a meeting, but like a conversation with a man who who genuinely looked like a homeless man, I'm not even going to lie. He, he, he just looked like a homeless man. He smelled a bit like a homeless man as well. He just wasn't the kind of man you'd think would have a million pound JP finance that he could just offer you. These people appear from nowhere as 
it's toy magic and you just get one. So this weekend, we're going to talk about this. We are going to touch on this tomorrow, but we're going to mainly focus on where and how to do this bit. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. yeah. Great. And we're going to talk about the where and how to do this to get us as quickly as possible to our 10, 8 grand a month. Did you get the solo tape, Callum? So is everyone clear on what packaging is? <coughs> For me, this business, this industry, is full of sharks, sadly, that don't give us a great reputation, actually. I believe that if you do everything in your business with these three rules in mind, build a sustainable long-term business. Ultimately, are we not all here for sustainable, good, credible reputation? Yeah? Because let me tell you, if you don't follow these rules, these people disappear as if by magic. We've all seen the Facebook groups and property tribes conversations and all of that sort of stuff. We all know the people to avoid. Why do we know that? Because people talk now. You do not apply ethics to your business just to chase every possible penny and you get a bad reputation and be out of business with your business. Create a genuine opportunity to make money for the investor. Do not sell shit deals, please. It looks bad on me because I've trained you. <laughs> Selfishly, right? But don't do it because they won't come back to you. The beauty of being a sourcer and a packager when you then start to source what to order for particular investors that you know that can work the way that you work because you've made them a load of money. Because then you only need five investors. You don't need hundreds. It becomes easy if you do a good job and you apply ethics to everything you're doing. Create a genuine opportunity for you to ethically generate revenue by helping people. So kind of problems are we helping? In your workbook, I think I should put this in. Um, I'm just going to put this here because this is actually for my reference more than anything else to make sure that I've covered the methods that I use to get things to work. So what sort of pro 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 problems, shout them out, tell me, divorce, divorce, we can't help them with the divorce, we can certainly help them with the property bits of their divorce for sure, what other problems, they're tired landlords, they're sometimes tired, they've been doing it a long time, yeah. <coughs> tenants anymore, anything like that, so let's, let's dig into the layers of why somebody would be a tired landlord, what thing would, could be happening, Problems with tenants. Tenants. Have a family. What else? Like just old and retired. Yeah, like not getting to use this business at all. <coughs> That's alright, just leave it down there. It's fine. It's fine. It's all down just leave there. Okay. Bereavement. Say again? Bereavement. Bereavement. Illness. Illness. Other side of the room? I think properties that aren't cash flowing well because in one instance perhaps the landlord hasn't got the money to keep it up to speed in terms of repairs and maintenance so void starts to decrease which in turn reduces cash flow which increases the problem of getting the spiral of you know, negative cash flow and maybe maybe a solution there. What else? Um, low pension. Relocation, <coughs> as in they're moving. What else? Just frustrated with estate agents as well. The deals fall through twice. <laughs> yeah. Six months yeah. are still on the market. Being let down. What other problems can we fix for people? 
how can we genuinely help people? Some of them time, not having enough time to yeah. look after it. Yeah. That's a free solution. So what what's the problem with fixing by giving them the hassle free solution? Credit in there. Credit more income. Or gar- gar- guaranteed income. That kind of falls under void. Guaranteed. And, and also guaranteed maintenance, guaranteed. So is it yeah. yeah. What are the problems? Um, yeah, need, need a quick sale because of probate, for example. Yeah. Too many. <laughs> And this is people who are effectively going to accept our offer, either a, a low offer to purchase, creative offer, i.e. a lease option, installment contract, exchange deal, late completion, whatever you want to call that, rent to rent. So how often, or do you do, or will you do, um, delayed completions, assisted sales, is that something that we will talk about that? Okay, yeah. So what other problems could people be having? So quite, some of these are... Um, Investor, like our world, let's see, what could cash flow be? Average Joe blog. Yeah? Why would someone accept £70,000 for a house that's worth 100000 Speed and certainty. Speed? What, what, what problem? What other problem? There's literally hundreds of these, so I want you to really think. Just start throwing these at me because. Moving abroad. Moving forward, we've got relocation. Can you answer the question? So, why would somebody? So, the, the rule number two is about helping the property owner to achieve a better financial position than they're in right now. What are the problems that people could be having that allow us to help them? So, what are those actual pain points yeah. that are happening? Yeah. Lost a job. Yeah. Tax changes, legislation changes. Yeah. Um, you mean people that live abroad that have properties here, right? Oh yeah, or oh, well, here they've got properties in the US. Like that in Scotland, yeah. That is what I'd call them, I think. Okay. They have a name. Say again. Accidental London. Yeah. Never actually got the fee allowed in the first place. So sometimes, so these, quite often the offers and the property owners that we are helping, they're not actually landlords. Could be they're selling or trying to rent out their family home. Mm. They're not in the, they're not in the investor world. They're not landlords. They're just average show blocks. <coughs> it's not in the property at all. Two okay. people that are moving in tomorrow from Paris. We've met them. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Got two houses. So divorce slash relationship shift, I guess. Yep. Medical bills to pay for. Medical bills. Yep. Kids going to uni. Downsizing, upsizing. Can't afford the living table. Yep. So they've been on interest only. Exactly. And, yep. So we're getting there now. You guys are doing really well now. This is absolutely the sorts of problems. What other ones are there? You want redundancy? Stability. Say again? Broadly. Yeah, got that up there. Do you want to put your money into new projects, new investment areas? Yeah. Very specific one, having to pay for your daughter's marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Which is exactly what happened with one of us. Weddings. <laughs> 
I just got up low budget. <laughs> Women don't get told that, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> we don't accept that response, I don't think. Low budget. Um, what other problems might we have? Why do you live in an expensive area like London? Why do you get to live in London? So we've got loads, and actually I'm uh, still quite early. I don't want to go push you too far just yet. Yeah. What I wanted to show you, okay, is that when we're thinking about the three rules that we have to follow, you can see there, and there are loads and loads more. People say to me, well, why would somebody do rent to rent? Why would someone give you their house? Why do that? Why would somebody accept less money? There are hundreds and hundreds of just because you wouldn't doesn't mean that nobody would. When you're doing it ethically and you're not trying to screw every penny out of the deal just to benefit your own pocket, and you are creating solutions, people say yes. Your job is to find the right solution for the right situation, present it to them in a way that works for them, the investor and you, and quite often they say yes doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. You need to, your job is to find out and discover the information that you need to be able to help them with whichever problem they've got. If you don't know what problem they've got, you're not going to be able to get them to accept the offer. Does that make sense? Okay. So rent to rent. What is rent to rent? Someone define it for me. When you're renting the property off the landlord, but you don't actually have control over the asset, and he has control, but it's their responsibility for the mortgage side of stuff, but you're actually kind of like the management of the property. Yeah, that's, that, that's part of it. What, what's the other part of it? Yeah. Sub, sub, sub blessing. Letting. Managing the tenants and also putting the tenants in. There's lots of different ways that you can say it, and depending on what contracts you use, it depends whether you're a managing agent or a tenant. But we'll talk about contracts later. Rent to rent, really simply put, where you rent a property from a landlord under a single agreement, so you become the tenant. You then rent it out using either the multi let or the single let model, and you keep the difference between the income and the Now, most people in the room, I think, will probably understand or be very aware of rent to rent multi let model. Is that fair to say? You rent it single let, you rent out all the rooms separately. Yeah? How many people know, understand the sing single to single model? Back to back. Yeah? Tell the room because you're the only person who can talk about <laughs> What's back to back? Uh, it's a multi let multi-let transaction. No, so that, that, that's where you are servicing it out by short stays, yeah? <coughs> yeah, so that's. Yeah, so you, you rent it single let. Rent it back out and single let. Okay. There's lots of physical faces going, what, those numbers don't work. How did that make any money? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of Northwoods? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Northwoods are rent to rent, single to single, back to back. That's what Northwoods do. One of the biggest chains in the country. That's all they do. They don't multi let anything. They pay 75% of market value to the landlord, they keep 25%, they rent it out of market value, single to single. But that's an easy, that's what I have to let me. Pardon? That's what normal letting agents do. They take the property from the landlord. No, what normal letting agent? agents don't rent the property. Normal okay. letting agents manage the property, so it's empty, it's empty. Fine. Yeah, a, normal, a, a standard letting agent doesn't physically rent the property, they just become a manager. Sense. Yeah, but most of them do, do, do <coughs> that. Insurance. 
space though, not the friend's place. They'll have an insurance policy that will do that. Does that make sense? Whereas so it has to be secure in the pub. There has to be, yeah. Back to back to where you rent the property or your investor, doesn't fit the deal, actually becomes the tenant and then they sublet it, but they just do it on a single let. So you can do that with a one, two, three letter house. Do you do that often personally or do you I sold it to that company. I don't do it not me. Okay. I'm not my own agent. Okay. But I sold it to that company. Would you go through why you would do it in certain areas or pros and cons? Um the reason I ever do a back to back mm -hmm. is because they've said no to the multi let. Okay. Usually. Because it's more profit in the multi let. Yeah. I make more money on my fees if it's multi let. Okay. But some people just say no. In which case you say, okay, no problem. We can pay this instead, but we'll guarantee it'll be a single let. Helps solve whatever problem they had, but with a different solution. <coughs> Sarah, is it the advantage of that is that because you're you know, selling for longer then? You sell it at basis and then people just slightly less money but will take it over a longer time period? What's, what's yeah, so the selling it, point? It, what to an investor? No, to the agent maybe. You know, if you're going through an agent yep. and you say, right, okay, it's not you're not gonna do it for more than a year, it's the landlord not you're not prepared to go more to that, but the negotiation I'll be honest, when you start talking about um, rent reductions, heavy rent reductions, like 25%, through agents is really hard. I'm not going to lie to you all. It's really hard because agents set the price because they know the market, they know what it's worth. So how Every you time you reduce their rent, they get less money in their pocket and agents don't like that. <coughs> yeah. So it's easy to negotiate, I say it's easy, it's easier to negotiate rent reductions with landlords based on lots of different benefits which we'll talk about. With agents, it would probably be quite difficult to do a back to back. Yeah. Whereas if you survive running back to back, it's easier to plan for a back to back. Yeah. Whereas service accommodation and, and multi debt rent to rent, fine for your landlord, for your agent. Because you can pay them what they want. Yeah. You know, I, 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 the houses I've got through agents here, we've maybe taken £200 a month off rent, but we've not ever tried to take like hundreds of pounds off. But we've taken maybe £200 a month off rent, which basis that we're going to operate in. So does everyone understand rent to rent? Yeah? Have we had a little light bulb with the fact that you can actually make a rent to rent in this format? Yes. Most people don't realise that our entire business is rent to rent. Yeah. Well, because there are a lot of landlords who don't want their property to be rent to rent to be and they've got the money to do that and they're going to do it all. Yeah. And you probably just walk away from them. So walk away from them. Yeah. yeah. See, I've just got a load of money with Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, the trick with back to backs is being able to negotiate with the landlord the reduction in rent that gives you that difference. Yeah. If you can get 25% off of rent for one bed, take away all of this for him, guarantee his money. Yeah. What, why wouldn't you say this to him? Northwoods have done it fantastically. Your profit will be a lot less on those deals, though, right? Probably a lot less, yeah, absolutely. If you had 400 of those... It's more of a headache for you, though, isn't it, surely? So no, it's actually less work to make a single let than a multi-let. Yeah, it would be, because it's got five family, different people, a single person, HMO or legislation, or all that. Yeah. Actually, multi-let's are much harder. Yeah. No, it's interesting seeing the two perspectives, because I've, I know some investors who are solely say go for big deals and have less deals it's to manage because the, the exactly you get all the deals and yeah. all the money from that one deal and you've got that one location to manage yeah. them different investors want different things <coughs> your job as Pat Joe is to be so open minded mm. and don't ever go in with blinkers and say right this is a multi let house because sometimes the numbers just don't stack yeah. I've got one now that's really annoying me because the numbers just don't stack on a multi let in the wrong place. It's a big, giant four-bedroom flat in Wellingborough. The numbers just don't stack. Mm. The, uh, the absolute most money anyone can get out of it is about four hundred fifty pounds a month, and on a four-bed, which would be run as a five, it needs to have a minimum of five hundred. Otherwise, it doesn't stack. Mm. So now I've got to now try and find another way because the landlord wants us to help him. Yeah. I hate saying we can't help you. Yeah. You can always. Is it because of the rent? It just depends on back to back. Back to be a long time. I would, I would say that everything, I would say. With back to back, I mean, would you say more than single let, or is it single let back to back? We single let and single let. So you take, you take it on and then you single let it back to back. And there's no single to multi. Okay. It's just a single to multi. 
in the future and you take on all accountability for all costs, yeah. all liabilities associated with the property in the meantime. Yeah, and what do you, what, what's happening in the meantime? In the meantime, then you're you're paying for the mortgage and what you typically be doing therefore is renting it out to someone mm -hmm. to cover your costs. Right to control the property. Say again? Right to control the property. Well, you right get the right paperwork, you've got the right to control it. You don't Yeah. It's, like, it's basically like rent to rent, but you agree in the future to be able to put, have the option, hence the title, to be able to buy the property off your landlord at a fixed price in the future. Yeah. Kevin? Interesting. So, super rent, talk through that. Yeah. I'll just say it's a creative rent to rent with an option to buy. Yeah, we're leasing it with the option to buy at some point. But you don't have the obligation to buy. You don't have the obligation to buy. Perfect, that's exactly what I was looking for. You're leasing it, you're renting it, but you agree to have the option to purchase it at X amount of money at some point within X term. Usually under seven years. Yes. <laughs> you agree to buy a house from an owner at some point in the future. You pay an agreed monthly instalment to the owner and you become responsible for the maintenance. And when I say maintenance, the upkeep of the property. Then you exercise your option to buy within the agreed term and you keep the difference. There's a deadline as well, isn't there? Cause yeah, because you would set the term, you would agree it within five years. Because I know an investor who... He agreed to like to the lease option. It comes to buy, yeah. but he was a few days. He's running a few days behind. Yeah. And then the landlord spun it around on him, and he actually then wants a higher price, and he actually agreed because the date was late. So, we, Elizabeth touched on this in terms of like how we make our money. And I think one of the things you're saying to me is that you're getting confused with how, what actually is it. What what is the benefit to the person yeah. selling their house? Yeah. Now. There are lots of ways to make sure that you're not screwing every penny out of the deal. There are lots of people that do lease options as simply as this, and they don't actually factor in any kind of added benefit at the end. If you lease option, and at this point, when you're exercising the option to buy, the house is worth double what you agreed, let's just say for all these amounts. What you're saying then is, I'm going to agree to sell my house to you at £100,000, and then in five years' time, at any point in the next five years, Give me a hundred thousand, the house is worth two hundred. There are lots of people that say yes to this. However, it's a really easy way to make sure that they don't feel like they're being screwed over because ultimately that's what they feel like. Yeah. Is to say, and if there's been a rise in equity, I'll give you back fifteen percent. <coughs> but if the house has doubled in price, now it's two hundred grand, I'll actually give you back 
15, 20, 30, whatever it takes. Just give them back. There's only a percentage of an increase in money. So the, uh, so the percentage of the 100 grand that's increased by, or the 200 grand that's done grand, so Only the increase. Okay. Only the increase. So let's draw it. I like drawing. It helps me to explain. So, 